In many ways, the business of fashion and architecture is not very different. Both create basic necessities, clothes to wear, buildings to live in. But like fashion, architecture is much more than just about fulfilling a basic need. Buildings provide more than shelter. They enhance and inspire living and breathe new life to cities. The Burj Al Arab in Dubai, the Opera de la Bastille in Paris, are just two examples of world acclaimed Uruguayan architect Carlos's approach to urban and building design. Carlos, you might have seen a billboard of yourself on the highway with a quote from you that says, if you're expecting a shoebox building from me, they'll be disappointed. What exactly did you mean by that? Well, I suppose that uh, as an architect, I tend to do, what's the word, uh, strange buildings. A shoebox building would be probably something easier to build, but uh, it's not much interest, and we have done many of those. So if I can convince my client to try to get out of the box and come up with a different approach, I try to do it. I think we have the obligation to propose new lifestyles, a new environment to live. And uh, I think that is somehow our obligation as professionals. Thinking out of the box may sound cliche, but for art, it's much more than just about fanciful designs. Art first immerses himself in the local culture, carefully studying the environment before producing a design. As you said, no two Carlos art buildings are ever alike, but if there's anything that is similar or common among your developments and projects, what would these be? The common in the mayor would be what I talked to you before. Given a new empty site, I will not come with a predetermined idea and impose it. I'd, li I'd really like to come with a tabula rasa, an open blank sheet, start listening, visiting, see the site at night and day and the rain or snow, talk with the neighbors, talk with the client, talk with potential users, uh, be it an airport, be it a residential building, be it an opera house or a shopping center, and try to create something that is unique to that site. And because no sites, no two sites are identical, therefore the two buildings cannot be. Off desire to create unique buildings is often misunderstood. Rather than blend in the neighborhood, many of his creations, like the Opera de la Bastille in Paris, stick out. You cannot, you can always say change. Change is part of our life. Heraclitus, I guess, said that a long time ago. The only thing for sure in life will be change. And I don't know how we will live in uh, 100 years from today, but I guarantee you it won't be the way we live today. Because global cities are never homogenous. Neither should its buildings be. A building can be out of place if rather than adding to the lifestyle of a city, it becomes a black hole. Each site will in itself have the solution to design the building. Now, when you will do a building in a city, you have to know the context, you have to know the history, you have to know who your neighbors are, and you have to take into account whether you are in the northern or southern hemisphere, where this is Sweden, or uh, Philippines, where uh, it's a cold country or a warm country. One of his newest projects is a partnership with Rockwell Land to build the Proscenium, a premium mixed-use residential and retail development anchored around a world-class performance hall, consistent with the emerging urban class way of life in Makati. The concept is a product of many months of researching the local culture and its penchant to incorporate entertainment in everything. Our goal is to create a focus, what could have been a residential project, to have a personality. These residential buildings will be immediately adjacent to a cultural center that will include a performance hall, a museum, art galleries, and of course, the restaurants and bars and coffee shops that go with it, so that we add another twitch, another interest to your lifestyle. Paris is a beautiful city, and so is Manila, and so is London, because there's activity 
all day long, the seven days of the week. And why? Because we learned that you need to have shops on the ground floor, offices in the upper levels, and residences in the top levels. That complexity, how you build it, how you mask it, what, what, uh, how you treat that uh, epidermis, is secondary. Only after a space has been defined does Oth and his team determine the physical design. For the proscenium, tall, rounded, pencil-like towers built far apart from each other. A design maximized for fewer units, all with clear vistas of the river and the city. For the fifth facade, the rooftops, feather-like structures. For a unique silhouette, typical of an odd creation. Our ancestors, up to the mid 20th century, were concerned about doing beautiful buildings. And then in Manila, in Buenos Aires, in Sao Paulo, in New York, we just built shoe boxes. And on, on the rooftop, our ancestors would put a cupola or a crucifix or uh, some spikes. We, in the last half, the second half of the 20th century, just put a water tank, the cabin for an elevator machine, and a stairs, and um, air conditioning, and a helipad. And I think that it's wrong. I, like, I think that we should build sculptures, not buildings. The ability to create more than just the functional, to weave dreams and desires into products, is as much an art as it is a business. A profession only a few excel at, and a lifelong passion shared by the best in the luxury industry. And that's all for this episode of Executive Class. I'm David Seldran. Thanks for watching.